Hey, it's Tim. And it's Amy from Go With Less. Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking all about cell phone coverage, both what we're using at home for a discount and what we use on the road. If you're new to our channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also ring the little bell so that you're notified when we come out with a new video. Also be sure to give us a thumbs up. And with that, let's get going. To cut to the chase, Tim and I both use Google Fi primarily, but we're gonna be talking about a lot more than Google Fi. We are gonna be talking a lot about Google Fi in this video though, because that is our predominant cell phone service. Before we made the move around Christmas time of 2018 to Google Fi, I didn't have any international coverage. And when I would leave the United States, I would have to turn my phone on airplane mode and I wouldn't be able to turn it on again till I got back home. Well, I was gone for nine weeks last summer to seven different countries. I could not use my phone unless I was on a Wi-Fi network, which was really tough. I didn't get to use my phone outside of the house for nine weeks. So did I live? I sure did. But is it a lot easier with Google Fi? A thousand percent. And we're going to be really sharing the details of that today. What we did last summer is every time we would show up in a new country or our service was dead from a prior country, we would go and try and find a new SIM. So we bought a new SIM card in Poland, in Hungary, in Austria, and in France. So every time we would show up in one of these countries, if our service was dead, I'd try and find something new. And oftentimes it was very, very, very affordable, but man, it was a pain in the butt. In Poland, for instance, I got a hundred gig of internet <laughs> For I, it was less, it was actually, less, I less than, oh. It was, a, is, I know exactly, $1.36. $1.36. $1. 36. So I had. For a month though. It wasn't for, like you could use it for two years. That's right. Years. So I had a month of service for $1.36. <laughs> so it was incredibly affordable, but it was a pain in the butt because we actually had to go to this provider. So I actually bought it at a convenience store and then had to go have it enabled. So I had to go to the provider store. Obviously we don't speak Polish. We had to have a conversation and try and figure out how to get the service activated. Ultimately, we did this, but I'm guessing we spent three hours trying to get our service turned on. So it took us, I think also, we probably didn't have any service other than Wi-Fi for two days when we showed up in Poland. And here is just a little anecdotal story. We got to Poland one full day late and we were checking into an Airbnb. So we were day late. We had been in communication with the Airbnb host beforehand to say we're, our flight is delayed, we're not gonna be there for another day. She said, no problem, just let me know when you're here. So I texted her from the airport because we were on Wi-Fi at the airport and then I had nothing. Well, she didn't get that message and we had been up forever. Like we had a very long travel day as we seem to often have whenever we're traveling. Traveling. So we were no sleep, trying to hustle to our Airbnb to get in and, and get settled. And she, I guess she didn't get my message. So when Tim is out looking for this SIM card, I'm trying to communicate with our Airbnb host because it's a high rise kind of an apartment building. I don't know the number, it was kind of a little bit crazy, but the answer is we needed to have some sort of internet in order to communicate. I had to leave Tim and go find Wi-Fi somewhere in the city after a very long two days of travel and finally we communicated but it we were probably standing on the street for at least an hour trying to find this woman because we didn't have internet and that is people can live without internet it makes things a lot trickier that we've had a lot of experiences where internet has saved us big time so the decision of internet or not internet isn't really one that we need to labor right that's exactly right. <laughs> it's also great when we both have internet connectivity. So oftentimes we want to communicate with each other. We're apart. And if one of us has internet and the other doesn't, it sort of defeats the purpose. So it's great when we both have connectivity. And one of us might be using maps while the other one is looking up a restaurant and one of us is navigating GPS or something like that. So, okay. So getting a local SIM, by the way, even though we use Google Fi now, and we're going to talk a lot about that, but even though we use Google Fi, if we were to show up at Poland in Poland, we very likely would do this um, very cheap SIM card because it is too cheap not to do it. But what Tim mentions, like we would, the first thing we would have to do in every single country was figure out the SIM card situation. And usually I can think of three different times we had to go to a store during business hours, stores generally are closed on Sundays and they also kind of open like nine to five and closed on holidays, they're closed a lot. So we would have to go find a store when they were open and do like an hour in the store to get this enabled and registered and paid for and all of that, make sure that it worked. So 
even though if we had the time, we would do the sim again, yeah. but we wouldn't want that to be the only thing we're counting on. No, it, it, part of the, the beauty of Google Fi and something that allows us to do that, so we, we have internet service when we initially show up in a country, part of the beauty of Google Fi is you can put it on pause. So if we show up, there's no other service plan that I'm aware of that allows you just to simply say, okay, I wanna pause the service, and then I'm gonna go use service in Poland, and then I'm gonna turn it back on when I need it again. That's part of the beauty of Google Fi is that you can do that. So even though you don't have to be paying for some other plan when there's really cheap cell phone service available in some arbitrary country, Google Fi lets you do that. And you could turn it on and off really, really quickly. So it's not like you have to give them a month notice or you have to pay yep. a month in advance. No, you turn it off the day, you turn it on the day, easy, easy, easy. Incredibly yeah. easy. So I use Google Fi on an iPhone. Tim uses it on a Google phone. We both have really good experiences with it, but we're going to be talking really kind of quickly about country, the countries that we've used it in and where it's been good and where it hasn't been so good. Uh, so in the United States, actually the coverage in the United States for Google Fi for me is pretty good. I, use, I came from AT&T before this. I was with AT&T for almost 15 years, I think. And in general, I didn't have any complaints about AT&T. That's why I kept it for so long. I did have a really low plan. My plan was no more than two gigs gigs of data a month because it was like this old, old plan that I was grandfathered in. But that's about what I'm using because that's kind of what I had. So I still am using no more than two gigs of data, but I'm finding that my Google Fi works about as well as my AT&T did at home. What about you? Yeah, so same same for me. Uh, so I've had a variety. I've probably had every provider that's ever existed. <laughs> so, the, 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 but Google Fi has worked Pretty decent for me. So just so you know, Google Fi is an MVNO, which means that they actually run on somebody else's network. And they happen to use two different providers' network. They use T-Mobile and they also use Sprint's network. And if you have a Google device, it will take the best of those two and go back and forth between them. If you don't have a Google device, it stays on a solitary network. I believe it's T-Mobile's, but I'm not exactly sure. And just a heads up, Tim is a telecommunications guru. He has a master's in telecommunications. So this is his total jam. Anyone who thinks travel hacking is his thing doesn't know the old Tim who telecommunications and phone stuff was his thing. So Tim is a tech, like, guru deep, deep down. Thank goodness for me because I am not that way and I am very grateful that Tim is. Now, we're going to chat a little bit because um, just a heads up, if you had been considering Google Fi, I'm going to be putting a link down in the, in the description that gives you $20 credit on your service. If you use that link, I also get $20 toward mine. And what is so nice is that you pay by the gig. So if I'm using it about two gigs, it's we, I pay $20 a month for unlimited calls and texts, and then 10 gig a month prorated for however much I use. I'm not $10 a gig per month for every bit that I use. So say I use 1.4 gig, I would spend $14. If I spent, uh, if I use 2.9 gig, I'd spend $29 on the data piece of that. Now here's a cool thing. If you use six gig of data, you'll pay $60 for that, but they don't charge you over that. So all you're paying is the $60 plus the 20 for the base phone and text. Now what I learned this month is if you do go from, if you go on the six gig a month, if you just hit it, it automatically kicks in. But at 15 gigs, they slow down your speed. And if you want to get back to the quick high speed, you go back on that for, again, you're back at the $10 a month for a gig. Hopefully that's not too confusing. But between, so the, the thing is, is that you're not paying more than $60 a month for your data, up to 15 gigs a month. Over that, you may be paying more. But I, it works great for me because I pay for exactly what I use. The other cool thing, <laughs> and I think that we forgot to mention this early on, is that Google works pretty much any place in the world. There are 100 plus countries. Do you know how many countries? We're going to talk about a whole bunch of them. Yeah. So there are many, pretty much any place we've ever been, any place we intend to go, I think is covered with Google Fi. So when you show up, the service just simply works. Yes, you just show up and it works. Incredible. It works at different degrees of it kind of works or it did, it, 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 but our, our experience has been that we show up and Google Fi just simply works. And in general, it works actually great. That's yes. our experience. So here's where we've used it, where it's worked great. And that's why we wanted to wait to do this video because we wanted to have a whole bunch more experience under our belt and more countries. So now we have that. This is from our personal experience. We have had excellent service in Mexico, in Belgium, in the Netherlands, in France, in Iceland at the airport. In Italy, we're gonna talk about that. 
eh, in Italy. Ireland at the airport, England at the airport. But Italy is the only one of those countries, in the U.S. we've had great coverage. The only country that was like, eh, actually not even, it's worse than eh, like not so great, was Italy. And this was not necessarily in every place we had been in Italy, but in Cinque Terre and in Milan, it was not so great. So We're not sure if this was our issue, like it was a configuration issue, or if this was something going on with just the way Google five works in the country, but we would go from network to network to network, different providers network. So obviously Google doesn't have service in Italy. They're relying on somebody else's network. And so the service would go back and forth between different providers and it was very mixed sketchy. bag of, yeah, it was sketchy to sketchy. say the least. Yeah. So just Italy. Our friend Chris has done a lot of travels around the world and she also uses Google Fi. So I asked her for the countries where she's used it because I think more information is just more helpful. So here's where she's used it with excellent results. Chile, which included Easter Island, Tahiti, New Zealand, China, Canada, Peru, Colombia, Panama. She didn't have the best luck in Mexico, but she talked with Google Fi and they kind of hooked her up and made it better. We have also been in Mexico. She was in Mexico City and I think maybe other, but she was around Mexico City area. We were in Merida on the Yucatan. It worked great for us. And I think when she got her problem solved, she said that it worked well for her as well. So it wasn't bad. At no point she gave everything a grade and all the other countries I mentioned were an A plus. Uh, Mexico was a B, so it's not like it was a, an F. But I'm gonna give like our Italy, that was probably a D plus for me. That was as bad as, as we uh, experienced. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. And now another girlfriend of mine who I've turned on to Google Fi is using it in these little towns of Turkey. She's there for six weeks and I believe that she's doing well with it in Turkey in very small kind of remote places that I've not heard of yet. Yeah. That so Yeah, so we are big on Google Fi. Now, as Tim mentioned, uh, we both use it on different um, kinds of telephones. I have an unlocked uh, iPhone, so you do need an unlocked phone, is that right? This you is not my- You absolutely have to have an unlocked phone in order for Google Fi to work. So they have a set of phones that work specifically that are Google certified phones that work in a unique way on their network. Like I said before, they'll go back and forth. If you're in the States, they'll go back and forth between Sprint's network and T-Mobile's network, depending on the strength of the signal. And so that's a unique feature that is unique to Google phones. So the Pixel is a phone that is one of their phones and there's a handful of other devices that work on their network. Supposedly these are better devices on their network. However, as long as you have any unlocked phone, you can stick a Google SIM in it and it should work on their network. Amy happens to have an Apple device and so far you've had good luck with I've been Apple, using yeah? it since December and here it is the uh, August 1st tomorrow and I am so thrilled that I want to talk about it on a video because I didn't have any internet for half of last year when we traveled internationally or a big chunk of last year and now I have been using my phone all over Europe so I'm really thrilled and it's so easy just to go into a new country and you use your phone and a story. Yeah, and so the other thing that's unique about Amy's experience is so before I think all in for a, on, on a month over month basis we were paying about forty to fifty dollars a month 50 for her. Fifty to sixty dollars for her AT and T service, and the Google service for all in for all the data she's consuming, as well as voice and texting. It's been less than forty dollars a month every yeah. month since we've had the service. So not only am I getting my international coverage, I'm spending significantly less money and I'm not noticing a difference in quality when I'm in the United States. So we are big on Google Fi. But I also wanna make sure we get to something else that Tim uses when he, so I use Google Fi all the time now. That's the only company that I use. When we are back in the States, Tim turns off his Google Fi and he uses something different. Okay, so like I said before, part of the beauty of Google Fi is I just put it on pause and my account just stays there, it stays active, and it, I think it goes off pause after 90 days, and you'd have to put it back on pause if you wanted to, but regardless, what I do when I'm at home is I have a service from a, a company called uh, Mint Mobile, and what I do at home is, for what Mint Mobile provides is for $15 a month, all in, I get three gig of 4G data, as well as unlimited text and unlimited voice. So this is a fantastic $15 value. Fifteen dollars a month. Fifteen dollars a month, all in. I get three gig of data, and all voice and all texting. And so the the trick there is you have to pay that annually. So I pay hundred and eighty dollars. I think my service is going to renew here in August. So I'll pay hundred and eighty dollars, and I have a complete year worth of service on 
Mint Mobile. They're also an MVNO, so they use T-Mobile's network, and so they're exclusively on the T-Mobile network. And as T-Mobile and Sprint merge, we'll see how that sort of works out. But this is an incredibly good deal. I really like the service that I get from them. It's really easy. You just you sign up online, you put in your zip code, and they'll tell you whether or not service is provided in your in your zip code. They'll ship you a SIM and you put it in your unlocked phone. Again, you have to have an unlocked phone for this to, to work. You can port over your number or they can give you a new number. And so far I've had a great experience with Mint Mobile when I'm at home. And you're talking coverage-wise? Coverage-wise. Coverage-wise. Right. Okay. Well, there you go. We would love to know what cell phone service you use whenever you are not in your home country. Please leave notes down below. Leave comments down below because we're always learning and our viewers learn from each other. So a uh, video all about our phone service today. Google Fi for the win in my mind. And Mint Mobile for the win as well. Yeah. And cheap SIM cards whenever you have that opportunity. Yep, definitely. <laughs> but if you're only visiting for a couple of days, I would think just stick with like the Google Fi. The Mint SIM, I think we would use that when we're there for a little bit longer. If we're going to spend an hour plus at the store, the you're not going to, not the Mint SIM, the, si the local SIM card. Yep. We don't want to go to a store for an hour plus if you're only in a no. place for like uh, two, three, uh, four days. Th this entire trip we've been here for how long? Uh, uh, like six, six weeks in France, one week in Italy. So we've relied exclusively on Google Fi while we're here even though there may be services here that might be a little cheaper that just work in France or that just work in Italy we've decided just to stick with Google Fi I think next year when we're on the road full-time and potentially we're in the UK for five months there's a good chance we're gonna look at a local provider and see if we can find something that's potentially cheaper than $30 a month but for for what it is Google Fi is amazing and I don't know that I'm going to be up. I, I like what I'm using, so I might just keep that. So we are very careful about our budget, and that's what we're doing for cell phone service. We hope that you like the video. Please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe over here if you haven't subscribed yet. Comment about your international experience with your cell phone. Do you just use your current carrier? What have your bills been? Have you been surprised when you got home and saw what you were charged? I'd be very interested in what that would look like. And uh, I guess with that, easy breezy. See Au you next week.